Friends, it's Morgan with Life and Lilacs. And in true practice what you preach fashion today, um, in the background while I'm talking, I'm gonna show you guys some video footage of me cleaning up our kitchen um, and using the two minute rule that I talked about in my last video mentally to trick myself to clean it. Because let me tell you, I had an amazing morning at the zoo with my kids. We were thoroughly worn out when we came home and I got them all lunch. And honestly, they kind of rolled through the kitchen like a hungry hurricane. So if you know how that goes as a mom, you feed them and then I put them all down for rest time and the kitchen was just a mess. And I was really tempted to go get in my pajamas and just chill out. And there is something to be said for rest, but today I knew that I wanted to do a fun thing later with my kids. Um, I'm gonna be doing a tea time with them around 3.30 or four o'clock after they wake up from rest. And so I knew I needed to get the kitchen in order. So sure enough, I just started kind of doing one thing at a time, one two minute task at a time. The first thing I told myself is it I can wipe down the chairs in under two minutes. The next thing was I can clear the table in under two minutes. I can clear the trash away in under two minutes. I can load the dishwasher in under two minutes. And sure enough, we were able to get the kitchen complete. Did you, <laughs> what'd you do to your doll, Evelyn? I, she had a wedding at nap time, so I, I don't want it. Oh, okay. But what's this for? What's this? It's the... an apron for her to bake. Are we going to bake together? Yeah. Is your dog going to help us? We're going to yeah. bake banana bread. Okay. But she has to sit to the side, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. She's... So I'm going to be making some banana bread with my kids. We're going to get it ready for tea time. And I wanted to do tea time with my kids because I wanted to practice some like fancy manners and I wanted to practice just something fun. And I grew up as a little girl having a lot of tea parties with my mom. And yes, even my son can learn a thing or two, even the baby <laughs> in tea time. So we're gonna make a special treat of banana bread for our tea time. The recipe is gonna be linked below. And I look forward to sharing you with you guys this experience. So let's do it. Are you ready to say? Okay, so one of the things I do to involve my kids in baking is I try and do a lot of pre-prep. So I go ahead and measure out everything and now they get to help me with the finished product. So let's do it. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's give you something to play with. I already have something to play with. Wow, well, he might have fun with these measuring cups. So you hold those. Okay, Caleb, have you mashed our bananas? Yeah, they're super mashed. All right, awesome. Okay. Now, what is your deepest desire? What is the prayer that's on your heart at night? Today's devotional comes from 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 9. There was a woman named Hannah who desperately wanted a baby, but her womb had been empty. So she goes to the house of the Lord and she pours out her heart. In fact, it says in verse 10 that she had a bitterness of soul. She wept much and prayed to the Lord. What is the thing that you have been weeping for and praying for and that you feel like God has been silent on or you feel like God hasn't been listening? Is there ways he has shown you that he really is listening or is it still feeling like he's just not there? When you feel that way, I want to challenge you to keep bringing the prayer to God. How do we ever clarify our deep desires, our pain, our wants, if we don't sort it out in prayer. And that's exactly what Hannah did. She went to the Lord's temple. She poured out her heart and said, Oh Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son. And then she makes a vow to the Lord. I also want to point out that up to this point, she could not even eat that she was so sad. And after she pours out her soul to the Lord, she feels the peace of God descend upon her. And she goes and she worships the Lord. She says, may your servant find favor in your eyes, verse 18. Then she goes on her way and ate something and her face was no longer downcast. Isn't that fascinating? When our hearts are hurting, when our souls are downcast and we are weeping bitterly, 
I also want you to know that you don't even have to have physical words. In this story, Hannah couldn't even say. It says she prayed silently. Her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. But God heard her and he gave her the peace that she needed. And it wasn't that he had fixed her circumstance or even answered her prayer. When she walked away with the peace and her face no longer downcast and able to eat something, she did not have a child. She didn't know she, she wasn't pregnant at that point. And it was walking away with that contentment and that trust in the Lord that gave her that joy. And soon after, it says early the next morning, they arose and worshiped the Lord and then went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah, her husband, lay with Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. And in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel saying, because I asked the Lord for him. And Samuel, if you don't know his history, goes on to be this amazing prophet for Israel and plays a huge role in God's plans for his people. And the thing is, God did remember her, but first she had to give it to God. She says, he remembered me because I asked the Lord for him. So today, what do you need to ask the Lord for? And that's a wrap on tea time. From our house to yours, I'm wishing you all a wonderful day and a day to just be present and enjoy things with your families. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Morgan on Life in Lilacs. And I cannot wait to dig into this banana bread and watermelon. Doesn't that look yummy?